Snitch on the toast, but I'm bum. Snitch on the toast. Hey, snitch on the toast, but I'm bum. Snitch on the toast. Wow. Wow. This is our last time seeing that for a long time. I know. I am depressed. I know. It's really sad. Nothing gives me, like, you could take a shot of espresso or you could sing Snitch on the Toast. <laughs> say shot of tequila. Shot of espresso or sing Snitch on the Toast, and both will give you the same amount of energy. Enough to do a morning show with Snitch on, on the, the toast. toast. Welcome, Snatchler. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be back at it again with you. Back at it again. Uh, it's been a great weekend. Yeah, very it's, relaxing weekend. Yeah, it's been, it's been, feels like it's been a long time since Claude we were has been in here. These chairs. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. been gone for a year. She's been gone for a really long time. She will be back tomorrow. She is on her way home from Morocco. I can't wait to hear all about it. I know. I can't believe she was in Morocco. It's just like so far away. It's so far away. She has a long journey ahead of her, and I hope it is not treacherous. Probably will be, though, knowing us. How are you? I'm good. I'm feeling great. Um, I did absolutely nothing this weekend. Love to hear it. And I just slept, and it felt amazing and necessary. So you're a rejuvenated snitch? Yeah, except I couldn't fall asleep last night, so not that rejuvenated, but that's whatever. A, that's always how it that's happens. That's what happens. I had a relaxing weekend as well. I did a lot of nothing, just like with a new backdrop. That's which nice. Which is always that's nice lovely. to have a change of scenery. Um, Zach and I went out to Montauk for the weekend, and it was so beautiful. Like, it was freezing, but it was beautiful, you know? Yeah, I'm and sure they have for reasons. They have a lot of outdoor fireplaces, so we were able to like sit outside and be toasty. Did you enjoy um, the snow this weekend? Okay, Counselor Snitch. Someone in my elevator told me it was going to snow this weekend. Someone Obviously, that you don't know, and then she comes in, and she's like, it's supposed to snow this weekend. I'm going to go to the Hamptons. And I was like, okay. And then I checked the weather, and it said it was supposed to snow on Tuesday, and jury's still out on if that happens. Jury's still out, but I'm having flashbacks because it was this week last year when it snowed prematurely in New York, causing the divine diversion, which um, I learned happened because... When it snows this early, not all the leaves have fallen off of the trees. So when the snow hits the trees, the trees become too heavy and they start to snap. They snap the wrist of the trees. They snap. And do they the, steal the kopari? They steal the kopari. They snap the wrist of the trees. Then the trees be, uh, cause roadblocks, and that's what caused all that crazy traffic and mayhem. Oh my and god! And then the guardia was closed because the trees couldn't handle the snow, which is why it's actually bad if it snows this week. And it could be divine version 2.0. And it's like I have the same situation as last year, where we're flying back from Nashville, and the next day I'm going somewhere else. But if I miss, if that flight doesn't happen on Thursday, I'm screwed. You'd think maybe you'd learn from your mistakes. Well, maybe the weather could learn from its mistakes and stop snapping trees. Well, maybe that's not how life works and you're supposed to learn from your mistakes. May, you know what? I actually am going to learn from my mistakes where I'm going to pack for the next trip just in case I have to go straight from Nashville to L.A. Wow, but like, that's a lot. I know, but like, I can't. That's a lot, Rachel. Thanks a lot, you idiot. Anyways, that's we'll we'll see how that goes this week. If we had Divine Diversion, the sequel though, I wouldn't hate it because the Divine Diversion is just such an iconic film. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, I feel like every time flying out of Nashville, there's an issue because I had one too. Yeah, do you want to hear something so crazy? What? I, when Zach and I were driving back yesterday, I was talking about how I was having flashbacks to last year's Divine Diversion. You were just like and, having PTSD, right? Because we were talking about the weather and the trees snapping, and he was like, "What's that?" And I was like, the divine diversion? He was like, did you just make that up? I was like, the divine <laughs> diversion? I was like, what? And he was like, no, what do you mean? I was like, when we were diverted to Pittsburgh? He was like, uh, he was like, it sounds kind of familiar. Oh, my God. I was like, well, I was late to a weekend with you, so I'm glad you don't remember it. Because, Pay attention, Swinney. Well, yeah, but I'm glad it didn't make like such an impact because I missed like his friend's rehearsal dinner because of the diversion. Um, oh, yeah. But I'm glad he remembers <laughs> I'm, glad he, I'm glad he's paying attention. Yeah, pay attention. Please. please. Well, it's going to be such a busy week. The next two weeks are so busy, and it's really like, I feel like I work in corporate America because the holidays are always so busy. For the holidays are so busy. For worker bees, and it, this time of year is just so busy for us. So this week is going to be crazy. Tomorrow, Claude's back. We're doing a show. We have a special guest. It's going to be awesome. Wednesday will be podcast-only episode. Thursday, no episode because we are traveling and praying to God that we're not diverted. And Friday, we are back in the studio. So it's going to be a great week. Wow, I can't of... believe you're only missing one show. And then, of course, on Wednesday, it's the CMA Awards. We're going live from the red carpet. Like, I'm so fucking excited, and I'm so nervous. Oh, my God. Like, I honestly, like, for the first time in my life, I don't envy you. Like, I'm so excited to be a spectator. Like, I genuinely wouldn't be able to do what you're about to do. And I know you've already done it twice, but even still, like, I just couldn't do it. So I'm just really excited to be, like, home, looking like a schlub, just, like, watching my sisters thrive and then enjoying it. I'm and so jealous of you. Like, I just, I could never 
do what you're doing. You would think, I mean, I can't do what I'm doing. You would think because we've done it twice before, like it should get easier, but no, it only gets harder. The stakes only get higher because the last two streams have been like incredible. incredible. And I'm just so nervous and my dress is so tight. So it's like on top of everything else, I'm going to have to be sucking in and like paying attention to my arm. Oh, that's the worst. Like that you're just, I can't like, like I said, first time in my life. Don't envy you. Yeah, but like it, obviously, but it do is envy so you because like you're gonna get so many. And cool, we're gonna talk like, to Luke Holmes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and we're gonna talk to Luke Holmes, who just dropped an album on Friday. <laughs> yeah. I told you that I wasn't ready to talk about the album until I had time to live with it, and I've lived, Have with, you it. lived with it. I've lived with it. We listened to it um, on the way there and on the way back um, from Montauk, and it's just incredible. Did and I want Zach like it. You know what? Zach was being like really annoying about it, Ugh. and like he started in with like they all sound the same, and I was like, don't go there. Yeah, don't yeah, fucking yeah. go there. Um, and then we put on Jesus is, is King though, so like we were we were having like an album and, and like an album drive, and then we listened to Golden Hour, and it's just still like the most incredible album. I was actually listening to Golden Hour recently for the first time in like a while, and I was like, holy shit, like this fucking slaps. Yeah, and he was lo- he loves Golden Hour, so I used it as a segue to put on um pageant material album and he didn't even notice oh okay. even though pageant material is so different than golden so Hour. different but we've gone off track because i still want to talk about luke we holmes. have to talk about luke holmes what are some of your early favorite songs even though they're all incredible it's like it's it feels rude to choose one right so all i'm gonna choose is like the songs that i've gotten stuck in my head okay. because that's a sign of like a great song okay i'm learning so something that's what I was new every, every day. day that has been stuck in my head since the album came mm-hmm. out like for I don't know why. And also um, does to me, A Damn Good Brother. A Damn Good Brother. And also when he's like, um, oh, fuck, I just had the line. What? When he was like, I stand up for what I believe. Yeah. I'm like, hey. Speaking of standing up for what we believe, thank you to all of the, the military veterans and everyone who is currently serving in our armed forces. Today is Veterans Day, so please Take think- a minute a military person because they are the reason why we get to sit here and just talk nonsense on the show every day for an hour. Thank you. So thank you. For your service. Thank you for your service. Um, Luke Holmes, what else? Okay, Better Together. Like, I think that that song, like, just might be one of his best songs ever. It's like a beautiful crazy. Like, it's just gonna... Oh, you think so? Yeah, it's like, I think it's gonna be, like, number one. And it's, like, the song that's charting the, the highest on country. Is it? Yeah. Snatcher with the interest on facts. Yeah, like it was number three overall all weekend. And wow. obviously it's been, the album has been number one overall all weekend, which is just, apparently it's like the first country album to debut at number one. That's like all seems genre. crazy that that's never happened. I know. I always re- like read these statistics. I'm like, you sure? Like yeah. that can't be right. Totally. I totally agree. But like, Kathy wouldn't post it on his Instagram if it weren't true, you know? No, no. Kathy is not a liar. He's not, he's not fucking around. No. Um, but... Also, all over again. Yeah, I love. Love. Also, um, reasons. It? Reasons. It's got the reasons. Oh my god! I just every song. It's like his lyrics are just like I can't with his lyrics, and they, they just are so logical but, and make so much sense, but so good too. Yeah. And also, do you know how many times I listened to All Over Again, and I thought the whole time it was about falling in love all over again, but it's not. It's about sometimes they fall in love all over again, but then they also break up all over again a hundred times. I only got that this morning. Because there's, there's so, so many much meanings. complexity. So many meanings. So much complexity. I honestly feel bad for anyone who released new music on Friday because I did not get the you chance to listen. You know who got the short end of the stick in country music? Kelsey Ballerini. Kelsey Ballerini. Well, she got to perform her new song last night yeah. at the PCAs. And while I love the message of the song, it's like, I don't want to go to the club. Like, I, I don't want to go to you. the motherfucking club. I, I relate to it on a deeply, deeply personal level. And she's like wearing that dress from I was about to say, were you jealous of the dress? I was so jealous of the dress. And she's singing like a song that is comes straight from my from my soul but like it doesn't hold a candle to Luke Holmes right right you know it's it's just totally different yeah and I think it's it's meant to be yeah different um he's performing at the CMAs though and I'm so excited I think he's gonna sing who maybe one too many like some one of his newer songs I think songs, he might or even what though you I'm see leaving. is what you get or even though I'm leaving really he performed it on Jimmy Fallon oh right because that's and also and he released it to country radio as a single and also Chrissy Metz performed it so like he has he to, need, he has to he take needs it back to fix it he needs to snatch it but back. he also released it he it's his newest single oh okay I don't listen to like country radio so I don't even know what no the I don't know are. that I just follow him and he released it to country radio he told us yeah okay well I hope he performs that so if that he, I can cry all my yeah, I was gonna off. say it's like What's the point of getting dressed up then? Yeah. Also, Blue Collar Boys is um, is a banger. All of them. There's literally not one skip. The, actually, the only things that I do skip are the songs that I already knew because I wanna I wanna educate myself with the with the new ones. Yeah. 
it's just, I'm so glad that we have this album. I can't wait to talk to him and Nico on the red carpet. What's up? They're so fucking cute. I just and like, like, I just love that she's in everything. Like, I can feel her presence in all of her songs. Oh my God. Like, when I'm listening to the song, like, I see her face. I see her face. And then I also I actually them, like, legitimately I, see her face on Spotify. Oh, I, I never, like, watch that stuff, but I, I saw that he put out, like, a special album for Spotify. He's also getting no, all the music partnerships. Every music partnership. But it's not just that. Like, the new thing on Spotify is, like, when a song plays, there, there's just kind of a boomerang playing in the yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. So the songs that are about her, it's boomerangs of, of them. Which is, I'm glad for it on this album, but in general, I don't like it because it takes up, like, it uses your battery. Like, I will leave my phone playing while I do my makeup and I'm watching music videos. It's like, I didn't sign up for yeah, that battery but, usage. But that's just what it is, like, everywhere now. Whatever. All songs. But yes, he's getting every partnership. He, like, I'm tell- he's literally the next Garth Brooks. It's the craziest thing. It's the craziest thing. He can do no wrong. And I just, I love them. I love him. I just, I just wish literally only the best for him. I hope that, like, this debut is at, like, number one on fucking Billboard. Yeah. All Whatever genre. that means. Like, that's, like, I feel like, it's like what Taylor Swift does, like, I know, number one a, on, on me, the chart of charts. Okay, I okay. Billboard is the chart of charts, but to me, the only chart that matters is iTunes. I know, it's but like, you know what? It actually you matters your music, except that it doesn't even matter. It matters it doesn't, nothing because it doesn't count for streaming, right? So it actually doesn't matter literally at all. I know, but to me, it, it just that's, that's, the, I that's agree. the only chart that I can see. I check iTunes literally on the daily just because I like to know like what people are listening to, mm-hmm. and that's just what I gauge. Is also wasn't iTunes supposed to go away like a long time ago? Yeah, I hope that it never does. Um, Except that I tried to buy the album on my phone and I couldn't figure it out because it's just Apple Music. Like, I could just play it. I couldn't buy it. Um, Are you sure? Were you in the iTunes store? Yes. I was in the iTunes store. I purchased. But no, I also had it pre-ordered. on my computer. I had it pre-ordered. Oh, look at so you. So just, like, download it automatically. Um, I, I'll figure out how to do it. But, like, I hope iTunes never goes away. There's nothing like paying $1.29 for a song that you believe in, you know? Like Toast by Claudia Asher. No, Literally. I always feel like I'm really supporting the artists once I buy their music. Yeah, you're such you're such a supportive fan. I'm. S- I you like, want me can, to be your like your fan. Artists can only dream of having a fan like Snitch. Yeah, like I literally people think that like I work for Luke Combs. Yeah, like they don't realize that this is <laughs> it's pro bono. Like he's literally never recognized <laughs> she's, me. <laughs> she's a volunteer. Like no, you get recognition. Though. I get recognition from everyone but Luke. I and mean, you know what? That is enough for me. He's busy. He's busy. Bangers. Yeah, no, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. He's busy making bangers. I don't want to sound ungrateful. I, I'm, I'm not. Well, I'm not. without further ado, I think it is time for the fast size stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> but before we do that, I must let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Legacy Box. I'm really glad that Legacy Box is one of today's sponsors because it is so pertinent to our Steeny situation. And it's one of those companies where it's like, the idea, once you hear it, it's like, oh, how did I not think of that? Right. Basically, they send you an empty box, which is great. You don't have to, like, go looking for a box to fit all of your things. <laughs> That's which, so true. You know, it's, like, so key. And you send them, like, old VCRs, film, anything that you want, like, old memories to be converted digitally. And then they will send it back to you in a way that you can watch it or view these photos digitally so you have them truly forever. So we started working with Legacy Bots a while ago. I sent them some of our old – we have so many home movies because we were, like, such hams. I mean, we make home movies here every day so like yeah imagine what we had when we were younger right so we got these tapes back of us singing the Spice Girls and it's just like none of us have changed Mm -mm. you know snitch is still snitchy Claudia is still like with her voice and trying to be in the center yeah and I'm still like taking it way too seriously yeah and like dancing (laughs) yeah and just like being so fucking extra yeah um but it's just like so nice to take a trip down memory lane and with Legacy Box you are able to do that Legacy Box is simply the best way to convert all your old analog media to DVD thumb drive or even convenient digital download so you can easily share with other members of your family it's an amazing gift especially around the holidays like give the gift of memories give the gift of memories you know what I mean like what um Kim did for Chris but just in a way that we can afford right this is like the Kim gift in a way that you can afford plus the process from start to finish is so easy you go online and purchase purchase the box that you need they send you a legacy box kit and you fill them with all of your media you slap on a prepaid mailing label and send it back over 700,000 families have, tr- have trusted legacy box legacy box has been in business over a decade and is the industry industry leader in professionally digitizing family memories if memory is the diary you carry let legacy box be the fresh ink that's really beautiful wow that that is beautiful get started preserving your past today go to legacybox.com slash toast to get 40 percent off your first offer. Save your time and memories. Go to legacybox.com slash toast and save 40% on your first order. Okay, you guys, this is an amazing thing to do, especially as a gift. If you're thinking of yeah. gift ideas, like 
right in time for Thanksgiving, like share these memories with, with your, your family. family. It's really beautiful. It really is. Sign on. Take a trip down memory lane. Ooh, down Mysteria Lane. Ooh, okay. I just need a sip of coffee before we get into it. Also, by the way, apparently you said VCRs and it's VHS, but you know what? I honestly thought they were the same thing. VHS that you put in your VCR. Right. You know what I meant. You, you know. Guys know it. You know. <laughs> you know. Okay. First story, PCA's recap, because mm. I watched mm. the whole damn thing. The fakest award show that exists, basically. So, I don't even watch coming it, from but someone I know. who didn't watch it. I and mean, coming from someone who did watch it, there were definitely like fake things happening where, you know, the person who won the award is the person who showed up. The to only people it. who showed up were winners. But maybe because they knew they were gonna like No, I, the only people who showed up were winners. Like I just, I'm sorry, that's not an award show. They were stressing so heavily that it was fan voted that like if it's not true to the fan votes, I think people would be rioting in the streets. I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't think people care enough about the PCAs to be riding in the I don't streets. know. It was actually a really fun award show. It felt like what award shows should be. First of all, award shows should be fan voted because, like, I don't really care about, like, the film academy. And, two, like, no one was taking it too seriously. The, the show was two hours flat. It literally just ended, like, someone who was presenting an award was like, bye, guys, have a great night. And it, like, didn't drag on like they always do. And I just, and there were only two performances, which I realized, like, no one really needs these performances at, at award shows. I live for the performances. It's the best part. Um, Alessia Cara and Kelsey Ballerini performs. Like, interesting choices. Here for it. And the Kardashians show up to the PCAs, which is... they really, have to. It's probably in their contract. But, like, we get Kardashians, like, on a red carpet talking to Juliana, like, answering questions. And, honestly, the dynamic between the sisters was on one last night. Wait, why? Like, they just Courtney and, like, was being weird and like Kim cut her off and I think it was also the way they were standing it's like you probably couldn't hear what the other was saying right. so they like someone would start talking and then someone else would like cu cut them off because you probably couldn't hear that someone had started talking it was just a little weird yeah Anyways, I mean there's definitely some there's definitely some some there there's definitely some some there and that is our, actually our next story so we'll get to it but some of the winners people's champion award pink was like a winner that wasn't nominated like, right it was like a, she was an award um her speech was I think the best speech of the night uh and second place speech was Cole Sprouse, who literally made me laugh so hard. Wait, what did he say? He's funny. He was so funny. He was nominated against like Brad Pitt and Leo for, and he was like, "You guys, are, like Brad, Leo, there's always next year." Like, <laughs> it was actually really funny. And then Noah Centineo won after him, and it was the most awkward speech I ever heard in my whole fucking life. It's like I was cringing from home. Noah walked so Cole could run. Noah could barely walk because apparently he oh, uh, I saw he busted his leg. Where was Alexis Wren? Why wouldn't they have walked together? I don't know. Fashion icon award, Gwen Stefani. She was being really cute. Her and Blake were so cute. They oh, both gave I love speeches them. and they were being so cute. And she really just didn't care what like people thought about her in her speech. Like her speech kind of made no sense. Um, and Honestly, she, I wouldn't know what to say either. <laughs> she like was just fine about it. It was it was really funny. Um, and then Jennifer Aniston won People's Icon of 2019. And you know, she's not my cup of tea, but I thought her speech was great. And she was actually like really happy to be there. She probably was like, didn't want to show up, but she has to promote the morning show and they promised her this big award. So she was like, okay, I'll go. Right. But they played this highlight reel of her whole career. And I think she was really moved. Adam Sandler made a speech about her. And I'm, I think she was really glad she went. Okay. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, she's been growing on me. I can't lie. Like, I used to be like, maybe it's because I watch Friends now. And so, like, I, but Claudia doesn't even like her. But honestly, like, I have nothing against her. No, me neither. She's growing on me more and more. And, like, I'm starting to ship her and Brad again. Oh, big time. Big time. Like, Angelina, I shipped when it was time. But it I didn't shipped, work out. I so I'll just ship, time. like... I'll ship anything. I know, but I shipped Angelina and Brad at the time, but I'm starting to feel like I was on the wrong side of history. I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like I was just like so young at the time. I'll just blame it on my naivete. Totally. Okay, the movie of 2019 was Avengers Endgame. Comedy movie of 2019 um, was Murder Mystery. But that's because Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston were there, and it's like they don't show up to lose. Fake award show. In that instance, definitely a fake award show. Action movie of 2019, Avengers Endgame. Drama movie after. Okay. Okay, I got to talk about that. Wait, I, at the, right before they won it won drama movie and it wasn't like announced on TV, they just smiled. I saw an ad for it on my phone, and I want to watch it. Absolutely watch it. I read every single book. The books were amazing. It's based off of Harry Styles' fan fiction, um, which is just like weird in and of itself, but whatever. Um, and 
I was so excited for the film. It was a major motion picture. Like, it was in theaters. Like, it's on Netflix now, so everyone's watching it thinking it's Netflix original. Like, I literally, every day I wake up to text being like, you have to watch after. And I'm like, no, I know. Like, I read the books. But people think it's just a Netflix original of, like, a, a good, bad movie. But, like, no. Like, th there was time invested into this movie. And it's, like, supposed to be, like, the next, like, Twilight sort of thing, except, like, not supernatural. And it's just the way that they did this first movie was so fucking terrible. Like, you don't even understand. Wait, so it's not good? It's good, bad. It's, like, I have never... I did, I, it took me three hours to get through this movie because I kept pausing because I was squirming with cringing. Like, I, I couldn't even handle it, but I had to finish it. Yeah. But And it's, like, they knew that it was bad because they have literally recasted everyone in the, in the film. They got a new director. The new director is the person who did Cruel Intentions for the sequel. Um... And it's just, and now like Dylan Sprouse is in the second one, and I think they're like revamping it because like they know that they fucking botched it. But I'm not surprised that they won because the after fans like yeah. are stand um, to its core, you know. Okay. But I just couldn't believe that it was awarded something because it was literally like the cringiest movie I've ever watched. And I I'm a fan because I read I literally read the books. Yeah, the girl who the star looks like I thought while I was watching the trailer I thought it was Chloe Grace Moretz, but then at other times she looks like Lily Reinhardt, and she literally looks like a comedy of the two of no, them. No, she looks like her sister, Catherine like, Langford. Okay, and then I Googled her and I saw her last name was Langford and I meant to click to see if she had a sister, um, but I guess I got Hannah distracted. Baker. I guess I got distracted. Hannah Baker. 13 Reasons Why. Uh, that I don't watch. Society. She's not in Society. Oh. What's the girl from Society? Christine Froseth? No. Oh, Catherine Newton? Catherine. It was another Catherine. Oh, okay. 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 I'm not totally out of touch. Um, family movie of 2019, Aladdin. Male movie star of 2019, Robert Downey Jr. Female movie star of 2019, Zendaya, who looked incredible. Her I just, hair. She just like was so beautiful. Her dress. She's just such an icon. And she's so gracious. And every speech that she makes, it's like so well said. She's so well spoken. That's she's what I was so say. well spoken. She's like just such a great role model for this next generation. Um, and I love her so much that I might give Euphoria like a real chance. I think you should. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts just because like I didn't get it. Oh, you didn't? I did not under I watched the whole thing. Oh. I just didn't understand it, but People are going to come for me now because when I said that last time, everyone was like, you don't have enough depth to understand. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I just didn't get it. Okay. Wait, if you didn't get it, then I probably. Um, no, but like you should watch it also because it's really part of the culture now. So like. Yeah. For your job. Okay. Drama movie star, Cole Sprouse, Five Feet Apart. Um, comedy movie star, Noah Centennial. Action movie star, Tom Holland. Most of these um, awards weren't announced on TV. Okay. And I feel like the ones where, like, like a, a animated movie star, Beyonce won. So they didn't announce it on TV because Beyonce's not there. The Taylor Swift won, like, album of 2019. She wasn't there. Right. So that's what, so maybe the ones that they announced on TV were the ones of people that came, and that's how it was unrigged. Maybe. No, it wasn't unrigged. It's still rigged because it's what we're seeing. No, but like they still won. They get their little thing in the mail. And um, as the award that's most pertinent to us, podcast, pop podcast of 2019, went to Tanya and Becca again. And I'm really so I'm very, happy for them. I'm very happy for them. And I'm happy for Becca because now she gets one trophy and Tanya gets another. It's fair. And I just podcasted with Tanya on Thursday night for Friday's episode. And she is just such a precious gem of a woman. And I couldn't be happier. No, she's like literally so nice. She's it's so the nice. craziest thing ever. That's what I was I telling her. I hope to be that nice one day. I know. You could learn a lot from I her. I could learn so much And from her, her niceness has been rewarded with a second PCA. PCA. Love it. I literally watched E! from 6 o'clock to 11.30 last night. I watched the whole red carpet because I thought that like Tanya and Justin were going to be on the TV show, but it turns out they were just on the Twitter stream, which oh. was just like so not in tune. It's time for them to retire Juliana Rancic. Yeah. Um, she did all right. And then I watched the show and then I watched Nightly Pop. They did the Nightly Pop Awards. Um, John Paul Jones showed up. He was being really funny. He is funny. Yeah. He was like, it's really just an honor to be nominated for an NPA. Um, What's an NPA? Nightly, Nightly Pop, Pop Awards. Awards. Yeah, it was really funny. So that was my night. Oh, and then I watched Shark Tank where the ageism is out of control. Like, for which age, They are so like mean young. to the old people on the show. Oh, that's so and mean. And anytime a kid comes in with the worst idea ever, they, like, of course make a deal. But, like, an old person, they not only don't make a deal, but, like, they make fun of them. And they just, like, berate them. And, yeah, the peanut butter pump wasn't the best idea ever. <laughs> but, um, honestly, like, I've, I've, I'd get it. There's so many, like, dumb tools that are just sold in, like, the kitchen section yeah. that, like, help people. 
No, I literally spent my entire day yesterday catching up on Dynasty and Riverdale. And then also, do you watch All American? No. I think you, you would enjoy it. But I, I actually s- have a lot of stuff to watch now. But I started um, looking for Alaska. Remember I told you that I think it's a show we should all watch? Yeah. So I started it. Um, I'm on episode six out of eight, and it's actually a really good show. And, it's a and show Christine we should all watch. Froseth is like literally the actress of our generation. Wow. She is just like s- such a good actress, and I feel like she's going to go so far. Um, the show like moves a little bit slow, but it's just kind of enjoyable to watch. Um, but I think that you would enjoy it, and yeah, that's what I did. Okay, I'm going to watch it. Also, Green Downs ma- like, just made an amazing point. I can't hear PCA without thinking about Zoe 101. Oh, totally. I, completely, I knew it completely sounded familiar. Agree. When I was saying it, I was like, this is not what it's meant to mean. Um, okay, I will check out Looking for Alaska. There are so many new Christmas movies on Netflix that I Let have to watch. Let us know. I got to watch. Everyone's talking about I it. I got to watch. Um, I'm kind of, I kind of want to save it, though. I don't know. I don't want to just, like, watch it on a Tuesday. Yeah, but I feel like I have a lot of flights coming up, and I'll catch, like, and The Crown is coming back soon. Oh, my God. I'm honestly, like, not mentally prepared to watch The Crown. What do you mean? It's just, like, it's just, like, really, like, slow and, like, dense. Interesting. I I'm love so it. I'm still going to watch it. I know. It's so good. And you oh, get, it'll you actually be smarter. interesting because it also... They're jumping ahead. It, they're jumping ahead, so it's like new characters. And I think towards the end of the season, we get Princess Diana. So, like, that will be an interesting... That will be interesting because I never really watched, like, any documentary about Princess Diana. So, like, yeah. I'm excited to get it from The Crown. Yeah. And The Crown, like, I feel like everyone's divided on the way that we remember Princess Diana. And I'm interested to see which side The Crown takes. Because I think The Crown is generally favorable toward the palace. Right. 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 So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. We'll be recapping it on this show. Okay, next story. Kourtney Kardashian says she'll be taking a step back from keeping up with the Kardashians. Bye. Okay, this is really crazy. Kourtney, well, all the sisters were on Entertainment Tonight with Kelty. And she was just like- With Kelty? With Kelty. I'm so happy for her. she was just asking like the most pertinent questions she asked about Rise and Shine. We talked about that on Friday. And um, she talks about Kourtney taking a step back. Kourtney said, quote, I just decided to spend more time as a mom and put more of my energy there, she explained. But I'm not saying goodbye. I think you'll have to see more of it on the new season, season 18. It isn't airing yet, but it's being filmed currently in this room. I guess they had- cameras with them so this is so interesting that Kelsey's gonna be on keeping up oh my god I hope so that, that would be great I feel as though we can see how this would happen like I feel like the sisters are just fighting a lot and Courtney's like place on keeping up is just always being the complainer like that she doesn't want to be there yeah she doesn't like it like I feel as though they don't even like filming with her and she just maybe needs to take a step back in order to appreciate it right and I think this will be ultimately a good thing however I feel like we're unique or, and the toasters in taking Kim's side oh are in we? the Kim versus Kourtney when, when Kim oh. said she was least oh, interesting yeah, yeah, to yeah. look at yeah. I feel like everyone really took Courtney's side on that um I'm so always like, on the wrong side of history it's I feel like the fans like don't hate Courtney as much as we do that's it's possible. Maybe like people are actually like devastado about it. Maybe. I, I mean, she'll still be around, but it's like she was a key player. Yeah. But I think she'll just like become more like Kendall and Kylie where it's like some episodes she's in, some episodes she's not. I'm so fine with it. Like I'm so sick of hearing her complain and like honestly, like I think she needs this. Like every time she like got on screen, she was crying because like I, I don't know. Like she, I think she needs some time. Yeah. Summer B says Courtney is the first mom to ever exist. No. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. Like, look at what your sisters have accomplished and they are mothers. Like, I don't want to fucking hear it. Yeah. No, I, I mean. And also her kids are the oldest, so they really require the least amount of work because they go to school. Like, she has the day until three o'clock. Like, she yeah. can film until three and then pick her, her kids up. Like, her making an excuse that, like, she can't film as much because she wants to focus on being a mom. Like, that doesn't really, like, hold water because Kim has more kids than her and, and does more than her. But I feel like that's not necessarily why she's not filming, but now she's going to use all that extra time to focus even more right. on being a mom. Also because ki- people have because been saying that her kids are, like, out of control lately. Yeah. So, like, maybe, like, she also really does need to take some time and be a mom. And, and like, get her on the spanking. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Like, do... I'm not going to tell uh, mom what to do. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. um, but do you think that Courtney is doing this in a way to be like? Because so many times in the show, like Chloe's been like, okay, so just leave. Like if you're going to keep them clean, like just go. Do you think this is her way of being like, okay, I am going to leave and like watch the show tank? Whereas like that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. But, like, I think it's th- just like she's she's tired and she's fed up, and she like I think you need to just take a step back from something in order to ever come back to it. If you love something, set it free, and if it was ever truly yours, it will return. Okay. So I think I think that's where we're at. But she's always been like a mainstay on the show. It's been her full time job. Yeah. Maybe Pooh should just get Do you think so. like her paycheck is gonna go down? It technically no. should. I think they split the um 
I think it's a hundred million dollars they got for, for all the seasons. And I think they split that equally, except for, I, I don't think Kylie takes any of it. Um, this is just my like conjecture. Opinion. Yeah. Uh, and I think she'll still get paid. Cause I don't think it's about the money for any, like, hmm. you know, like she's not doing anything. No, but she'll just be on it less. Okay. Okay. Like maybe like Kendall, I think Kendall gets paid from the show. Honestly, I don't know. But Scott like gets paid. Scott's on it so much. He should be getting an He's equal definitely share. getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's putting Sophia Richie on it. He's definitely getting paid. Did you see um, the sisters and Chris and Corey at the awards last night? Yeah, I did. They just looked so Did you know beautiful. that Corey Gamble's 39? I found that out today because the toasters were saying he's younger than Corey. Well, not even that he's younger than Corey. Like he's in his 30s. It's, yeah. it's, it's. It's mind blowing. Like I saw all of their posts, like thirty nine on all the jerseys, and I was like, "Was he born in nineteen thirty nine?" I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Is he thirty nine? And then I looked it up, and he was thirty nine. I was like, "Holy shit!" That's crazy. He's the exact same age as Kim. That's crazy. It's crazy how like him and Chris really work. You know? No, one hundred percent. And I love them actually, but I was just genuinely. Surprised. I never thought about how old he might be. I've never. He had to looks take a older guess. than thirty nine. Yeah. Well. Maybe you just associate him as older. I don't know. I wonder if you had asked me before I knew, what would I? You would not have said thirty nine. That's for damn sure. Maybe not. Maybe I would have said forty. I would have said like a nice forty five. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Next up, ooh, Teresa Giudice and her daughters leave Italy after visiting Joe Giudice. Quote: Love you. See you soon. Okay. The Giudice women are in Italy visiting Joe and. Real Housewives of New Jersey cameras followed them there and they just had to leave. They posted some really cute Instagrams over the weekend. Obviously, Joe was on his tippy toes. That's what everyone's talking about. I saw about. I, I mean, saw. his girls are just getting so big. Like, what is he supposed to do? And he's just getting smaller and smaller. Smaller and smaller. Smaller and smaller. Um, he's, he's small and feral. This is really sad. I haven't watched the New Jersey premiere yet because I have not had the time. And I'm going to watch it tonight so we can talk about it tomorrow because, like, you don't even watch. No. But the season looks so freaking good. Is the Italy stuff going to be in this season? Or yes, I, I believe so. Wow. Actually, they might, That's like, quick jump, they might jump too because usually they don't, fil- they don't film anything like while it's airing. Right. But this was necessary. This was necessary. Just like on Beverly Hills when they had the lunch at, like without Lisa Vanderpump was filmed like much later than everything else. Oh, right, right, right. I can't believe Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Atlanta were nominated for PCAs last night. Interesting. Yeah, the they really got a lot of the um, nominations. They did them really well, like Vanderpump Rules, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. They also had comp- uh, reality TV competitor, Hannah Brown won. Did you see her speech? Oh, of course. I didn't see the whole speech because it got cut off in the Instagram video that I was watching. I just more so saw one, more so wanted to see like the um, vibe between like her fellow um, competitors. And like when she won, hugged Colton. I think her and Colton are fine. And then like Tyler C. I just like couldn't. Like honestly, like I just felt... I just felt so uncomfortable for her. And then did you see that everyone that was like at, that was Bachelor at PCA's, like they all went out last night, but like she just went home. But because also she's on Dancing with the Stars right. today. Like, okay, that's why she went yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, But it's just like, it, the whole thing must be so weird. And it's like, did they really have to seat them at the same fucking table? Like, it's just the like. The Tyler C thing is weird. That's what I'm saying. They're at yeah. the same table. Yeah, They're sitting Colton's across from each other. also her ex-boyfriend. Right, but they are fine. He went, to, he goes to Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Like they are fine. Yeah, it was, it was definitely weird. She looked amazing though. She did. She looked amazing. Yeah, you were you were happy for her as her number one stan. Yeah, why you didn't think she looked amazing? Um, no, she she's beautiful and she's like her body is getting like crazy. Her body is getting from dancing insane. with the stars. It's just not my kind of dress, but like she was really cute and Roll Tide was funny. Did she say Roll Tide? She did. Of course she did. Um, so back to Joe and Teresa. Everyone's letting me know this is for a separate special that they're filming. Oh, love turning out that extra content. Yeah. Um, this is just like really sad and really crazy and. I don't know. I can't believe, like, honestly, the most shocking thing to me is, like, how big all the girls are. Like, Melania is, like, I always just think of her as, like, a little Melania. Yeah. But she's all grown. And Gabriella, what's so crazy is, like, Teresa had Gabrielle, not Gabriella, Audrina, Adriana. She had her on the show. That's freaky. That's you know? so weird. Like, she, like, was a bebe. She was a bebe on the show. And, like, the size of Adriana is how long we've had Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy times. I mean, I can't believe Gia's going to college. I know. I'm really excited to see Gia and um, Frankie. Are they going to the same school? No, but they went to prom together. Oh, it's on the show. And it's on the show, and I'm just they like, should, <laughs> are they dating? I don't think so. I feel like it was a friend date. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's like maybe her boyfriend like, like backed friends. out, and her mom was like, "I'll get you a date, sweetie." I oh, just stop, can't. It's stop. so cute. That is cute. I'm like, I'm really excited to see how it went down. Anyways, I'll be watching New Jersey tonight. We'll be recapping it tomorrow, so I need to tell Claudia to watch. Okay. 
Are you excited for our next story? Yeah, what is it? Well, before I can tell you what it is, I need to let you know that today's episode is also brought to you by a toast favorite daily harvest Mm. because we are all overbooked overstimulated and constantly running on empty for me I'm always rushing to do podcasts and then I barely have enough time to do anything else let alone eat like a hearty freaky meal which is why I love daily harvest because it makes it so easy for me to eat like real food Food. but on the go daily harvest makes it easy to eat more fruits and vegetables with thoroughly sourced chef crafted foods that can be prepared in five minutes or less each recipe takes one step to prepare with room to make them your own add your favorite milk to blend a smoothie or beat up a harvest or heat up a harvest bowl and top it with <laughs> avocado or fried egg oh my god that sounds delicious honestly I'm i have hungry. a few daily harvests in my freezer and when the show is over i'm going to chow down are you gonna put an egg on it Ooh, maybe avocado yeah love me some avocado also this is perfect for my cma awards diet Daily Harvest works directly with farmers to harvest organic fruits and vegetables at their peak and freezes them within 24 hours to lock in the nutrients. Everything stays fresh in your freezer until you're ready to enjoy it. If you want to enjoy Daily Harvest as well, go to dailyharvest.com and enter promo code TOAST to get $25 off your first box. That's promo code TOAST for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com dailyharvest.com promo code toast like start eating healthier it's perfect for millennials like us on the go like whoever really has time to eat breakfast but with daily harvest you don't you don't have to sacrifice like nutrition and just eating well no I'm with you I wish I had time but I don't but with daily harvest you'll you'll have the time I'll have the time okay Next story is what everyone is talking about this week. Instagram is about to start oh, yeah. hiding like counts in the U.S. It's like the second I actually start getting likes, I go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been talking about this for a while, and it was rolling out elsewhere, but it hadn't come here. And now this week, Adam, CEO Adam Osseri announced at a Wired event in San Francisco on Friday that this week it is coming to us. America. Um, I'm, like, fine with it. I just feel like now, like, my feed's going to get, like, a lot chiller, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm excited to see what people are actually doing with their lives and what they actually look like. So that'll be exciting. It's just like literally the second I started getting likes has happened. It's just like rude, but whatever. Well, the likes still matter because if you are an influencer and you're working with brands, like you'll still need to like prove. Do you still get to see? You get to see, but no one else gets to see. Okay. And I think it's exciting. I mean, I think it's important for just like mental health because like us. Oh, for sure. Us like measuring ourselves in likes is just not a way to live. But I think it's actually going to be great for creativity. Like I feel like so many times people don't po- people don't post pictures that they might post because they think it's not going to do well. Right. But now you're just going to post the pictures that you want to post. Doesn't mean you're going to start posting garbage content, but it takes away that anxiety of like, what do people, are people going to respond to this photo? That's and fair. I feel like for me, like now you can really just focus on your flow, creating content and yeah, and your flow. Like I posted a mirror picture yesterday and I was like, I'm excited for Instagram right. likes to go away. Cause it's going to be all mirror pics all the time, which I, I, it's not going to be all mirror pics all the time, but like sometimes mirror pics are kind of boring. Um, they don't do so well, but I either want to show off my outfit or it's just like the next thing that like I need in my flow because or not it's every- the only photo that you got. Right, it's or it's the only photo that you motherfucking got. I feel like it's going to take a lot of emphasis off of people like going and doing photo shoots. Like so to these crazy lengths yeah. where it's like a, a nice photo, like just post the photo that you got. Yeah. Don't like sometimes you can go out of the way do a photo shoot blah blah blah, but you don't have to like break your like your back to get the shot. Yeah. No, I'm with you. And so I, I think feel like it, it'll be like, it's just, it's times are changing, you know, times are changing and you just got to adjust with the times. I think this is a really responsible move on Instagram's part. Obviously I'll be upset that I can no longer like really see who has fake followers with their like bullshit engagement. Um, I feel like you could kind of see based off of comments, maybe comments, maybe, maybe, I, I don't, don't know. know. But the people still do that thing where they like reply to every comment. So if you got like, oh my God, but third- then, but then when you see that, you know that this person's a fraud. Yeah. Like when I see people replying to every single comment, even if someone replies like a heart, no, even if someone comments a heart and then they reply like a heart, it's like, why is that necessary? I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's necessary because they're like worried about their engagement. So I guess that will be a good telltale sign. But if like for all these like fake bloggers out there, I feel like this is the best thing that could happen to them, you know, because yeah, because they don't have to worry about likes anymore. Yeah. Or for people who's like, whose content's gotten really stale, maybe they have like all real followers, but like the followers just like don't like their photos so they don't come to the top of the algorithm. And anyone who like blames the algorithm for their engagement, like they're so excited about Oh my about God, this. the worst is when I see bloggers like post like, have you guys not like, my they're, no, they're like, my photo's like not showing up in your guys' feed. So here, like I'm just gonna like link it here. Like this is my new post. And it's just like, 
that I saw it. No, I just didn't like it. No, it sounds like Instagram is working perfectly well. Yeah, it's a machine. Like it's working. For it's fine. Else. It's working for everyone else. Like, it's fine. It's, I can't. I can't. Yeah, um, but I think it's gonna. I think this is like a huge change. You know, it's like one small step for man, one huge step for mankind. I think this is really gonna like change social media, or maybe it won't at all. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know about like long term effects. Like, I don't know what it could actually do besides just make people, f like, help people feel better and stop comparing themselves to others. That would be, like, a great, that would be a great thing. Um, but then aside from that, I don't know if it's going like, to change social media as we know it. But I don't think it will make people stop comparing themselves to others because still people will have, like, Instagram FOMO and just, like, posting, you know, doing it for the gram and doing it for the toast, obviously. Um, but I think it's, like, going to change the way people feel just about themselves compared to themselves. Like, you just... Maybe you post a picture, you don't get that many likes, and you're like, oh, I, I look like shit today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll lose that. You yeah. Know? Or like... That's fair. I guess people will still let you know what they think of you in the comments. Yeah, like if I'm not... Get, now it's going to be like, if, if I'm not getting a lot of comments, this photo's doing terrible. And if they don't like your jacket, they'll let you know in the comments. Oh, my God. I can't believe I, We haven't spoken about it, but your jacket took the world by storm this my weekend. My jacket took the world by storm this weekend. I just got this jacket last week. Um, I literally saw it. I was like, oh, my God, I have to have it. I found it online, um, and I, like, needed to use Honey in order to get uh, some I remember. discounts. I remember. And I'm so obsessed with this coat. It's like this uh, Pliny tie-dye vibe sax pot coat and like my picture did really well so many people loved it but like so many people thought it was like the ugliest jacket ever they were using the word hideous and when someone says this is hit does that mean that's short for hideous uh um, like, need to check urban dictionary I've, nev like, I've never heard it or maybe like this is a hit like <laughs> maybe maybe um but it's like I never thought for one second that this jacket would just like take the world by storm. No, like, I didn't think would people so would be so mad about it. Like, it's literally just, like, a colorful puffer. No, I never thought it would be so controversial. It was so wild. Like, I, I saw, like, threads about it. Like, yeah, it was too. just, like, whoa. Like, it's the weekend. Like, no, go go party. Like, go do something. Like, it was so crazy. And people I were can't. saying, like, I looked like a big marshmallow as if that was a bad thing. That's, like, people, kind of the point of a puffer. made, like, a side-by-side -side of, like, me and, like, a Pliny marshmallow. And I was, like, you don't understand. To me, like, that's, that's a compliment. That's goals. Like, I don't know. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> like, I can't. Whatever. At least people are talking about you. I, no, totally. And I freaking love the jacket. It's literally me in a jacket. Hit does mean hideous. Hit does mean hideous. Okay. Or like, this hits. That's so fucking funny. I love that shit hit. Okay. Good to know. You learn something new every day. Yeah, we're going to start using I'm that. I'm learning something new every day. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay, ready for our next story? Always is final, about your jacket. Jackie O problems spotted jacket, in a hit jacket. Jacket O problems. That'll be my next caption, guys. Look out for it and make sure to like it. But even if you don't, it's okay because Instagram's hiding likes. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? I am. It's a little bit of biz news. But before I can get into it, I must let you know that the biz news is brought to you by Liquid IV. For all my tipsy toasters out there and, and toasters who are interested in staying hydrated, um, Liquid IV is the fastest, most efficient way to get hydrated. It actually is. It actually is. I'm on Liquid IV heavy diet regimen this week because I need to get hydrated before CMAs because my skin is just like garbage. I accidentally got your package of Liquid IV and I never gave it back to you because I stole it. Because it's that good. <laughs> Trying to drink more water? Liquid IV hydrates you you two to three times faster and more efficiently than water alone with the added bonus of vitamin C, B3, B5, B6, and B12. Feel good and do good. Liquid IV has donated 1.5 million sticks to date to places like Haiti, Uganda, Puerto Rico, and most recently Nepal. With each purchase you make, Liquid IV donates a serving to someone in need around the world. Liquid IV helps prevent jet lag and headaches when traveling. TSA friendly and is perfect for on-the-go travelers. Helps to keep your skin hydrated while flying and can be used before, during, and after flights. Okay, this is literally meant for me. When I fly, I just become like a shriveled up raisin <laughs> and I need Liquid IV desperately also I've been having like a headache for the past 48 hours in your eyebrow like yeah right in my like eye that's so weird Nicole had an eyebrow headache and she like kept saying all day I have an eyebrow headache I don't know what to do I think it's just like a, a, a migraine um but I do need that I, I do know that I need to become more hydrated and I need to just cut the chase cut to the chase and use liquid IV Liquid IV is the fastest growing wellness brand. You can find them everywhere, even Costco. You can find their hydration multipliers sold at all Costco's nationwide. It's a healthy alternative to traditional sugary sports drinks. No water, artificial flavors, preservatives, like some of the other hydration, quote unquote, hydrating. 
hydrators. <laughs> it contains five essential vitamins, including more vitamin C than an orange and as much potassium as a banana. Okay. You guys, love, I love potassium. You got to get yourself some liquid IV. I love liquid IV and I know you will too. Right now, our listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use our code toast at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter our promo code toast to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com promo code toast. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. Also, like it's when just, I run out of the stolen package, I'll, I'll renew. Oh, Totally. Tis the season for hydrating. Also, just tis the season, y'all. Like, I can't stop getting excited for the holidays. It's so exciting. Are you feeling that Christmas cheer? I'm feeling that Christmas cheer. Um, I'm just, like, loving winter this season. I know. Usually, like, I always dreaded it, and I was like, oh, my God, like, I love summer, bathing suits, all that crap That's tops. so you. And, like, now I'm just, like, living for winter, and I brought all of my winter clothes to my apartment, and so, like, things are just, like, really just taking a turn. Like that sweater? Yeah, but I'm leading a life of regret, so I can't stop looking at my phone, because it's like, you can't wear stripes on oh. camera, and I didn't even think about it, and I'm, I'm looking very large. And okay, but you look very cute in person. Thank you. But I understand. I'm sorry. I didn't that's, even think of it. That's how you're going to go out. Everyone was loving my sweater earlier and it's I've literally had this sweater dress since high school. Yeah, I have it in black because I stole it from you. It's theory and I'm realizing everything theory that I've ever owned, I've had for 10 years. Me too. And I, that's just that theory quality. Every good sweater, like every everything. This I've never tossed skirt, anything theory. This pleated skirt that I wear at least once a week on the show is literally mine from high school. Like the zipper's broken and I don't even care. Yeah, I have so many things like that. Yeah. That like will just never be They'll never go away. They'll never go away. Okay, fifth and final story, a little bit news, um, a little discriminatory news because this is fucked up. Apple co-founder says Goldman's Apple Card algorithm discriminates. Apple what? Inc. and Goldman Sachs Group Inc., two of the most recognizable companies in tech and finance, are caught up in a growing debate over whether lenders unintentionally discriminate when they use complex models to determine how Americans borrow money. On Saturday, Bloomberg reported that a Wall Street regulator had opened a probe into Goldman's credit card practices after a viral viral tweet from a tech entrepreneur alleged that the Apple Card's algorithms discriminated against his wife. Now another high-profile user of the Apple Card, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, is calling for the government to get involved, citing excessive corporate reliance on mysterious technology. Quote, these sorts of unfairness bother me and go against the principle of truth. We don't have transparency on how these companies set these things up and operate. Wozniak said he can borrow 10 times as much as his wife on their Apple Cards, even though they share bank and other credit card accounts, and that other lenders treat them equally so uh, people are saying now that like women are getting less like um what's the word credit limit credit limit than men like that these algorithms are biased against women interesting I was not understanding one word that you were saying I know that's why I just summed it up thank for you. you in layman's terms in layman's terms um that's fucked up and not cool yeah, I want, like, what, it, what why? Wh why? Like, what, what's the point in maybe that? Also, like, you know you're going to get called out. Maybe they think women are irresponsible. No, but they get to, like, just say it's, like, this hocus-pocus algorithm. Oh, it's, it's to the technology. But it's we like, don't know what the algorithm's doing. But they made it. Yeah. They coded it. They I make that I algorithm women do are, its thing. I think women are very financially responsible. They're very fiscally responsible. I'm, as a woman, I'm very fiscally responsible. Sure. <laughs> no, I am. Like, if you give me a credit limit, like, that's the freaking limit. Well, yeah, because you literally can't go oh, over it. Oh, that's true. But still. Sure. I think just men, like, are crazy. Go buy cars. Not to be trusted. I saw hustlers, and they just, like, go charge up all these yeah. credits. That's because their credits were so high. That's true. Anyways. Um, I just thought this was a crazy story and like Steve Wozniak is getting involved like against Apple makes you think this Apple card, it looked, I actually saw a commercial for it that looked really enticing. But like, why would I switch my card to an Apple card? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, it's like maybe if I didn't have one, I would be like, oh, maybe the Apple card. But like, I also don't want to be someone who's getting the, to be one of the first people to have an Apple card. Like at least like with like Chase or things like that, like, you know, it's good and you know, it works but like this. Like, you don't know. Yeah, but it, they have, it's Apple and Goldman Sachs, so, like, you you trust. Yeah, I guess. But then you trust, and then you're fucked. That's yeah. what happens. Yeah, but I think uh, someone was saying in this article that this is an issue that happens with a lot of, like, banks and their algorithms, and that they're just, like, inherently biased against women. I just think that's fucked up. Like, let the women spend, man. That's fucked up. You know? Fix it. Anyways, that was our fifth and final story. The Snatchler. Oh, my God. I just don't want the show to end because this is, like, the last show I'm going to do with you in a while because um, 
you're you're leaving. I'm leaving. And I'm so excited for you. Thank and it's you. just like the definition of bittersweet. It really is. It's so wild. It's so bitter, but it's so sweet. It's so bitter, it's so sweet. I'm I'm growing up. You are. And it's wild. And this was always the plan. It just took like a little longer than expected. Yeah, no, honestly, it came too quickly, honestly. Yeah. Well, it's great because you have brought back The Snatcher, which is just my favorite podcast. And we will get to go on this journey with you. So even yeah. though like you won't be sitting on the snitch cam every day, like telling us you'll what's still good. like I'm not disappearing, guys. Yeah, we're gonna hear from you once a week. Like you're gonna share your life updates as you like figure out this world. I know. I'm so. It's like I feel like I'm just like I don't know what a good analogy is, but it's like when you like blossom. No, like spread your wings and fly. Yeah, and it's like what if I crash and burn? What if I don't? No, you're like a little cocooned worm who's about to turn into a butterfly. I hope I turn into a butterfly. What if I die? You won't. You're already a butterfly. (laughs) Biggest, most beautiful butterfly in the world. No, I know. It's it's so crazy. But like, also, I think I'm going to be here tomorrow, so. Oh, you will be here tomorrow. Um, But you'll be back on the stage. When's my last day? Do we even know? Um, Like on Friday. Oh, wow. I like don't get like one day. Yeah. Well, you're not coming to Nashville this week. That's true. I'm so excited and nervous for Nashville. I just... I'm freaking. I just, like I said, don't envy you, but I'm excited for you. I'm excited yeah. to to watch your journey. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. No, you're going to have the best time ever. And it's just yeah. like. No, we always do. But, you know, these things, like, it's, it's, it's an honor. It, it's an honor. And, and it's just, I don't take it lightly. It's an honor and it's a pit. It's an honor, it's a pleasure, and it's a pit for sure. For sure. And this dress, like, it's just going to be. You're hyping this dress up so no, much no, no, now. No, not because of the way it looks, but it's like this de- dress is going to be the death of me. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. Like, it's fucking tiny, honestly. <laughs> it really is. It's like hanging in my apartment. And, and like... it literally looks like, like for a doll. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, what else do we need to recap? I caught up on Real Housewives of Dallas. Um, Are you caught up on Dynasty? Yes. You are? I need to talk about it because as the number one, I think we're like the number one Dynasty podcast fans. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. For, I don't know one other podcast that talks about Dynasty, right? Except like they went on the Zach Sane show, but he made it very clear that he never watched an episode. So, as like the number one fans of Dynasty, I just want to say like I'm not loving the season. Me neither. Adam is ruining it for me. There are so many like new storylines that are taking away from like our precious gem of a Fallon. Yeah. And obviously, I'm so tired of like Fallon is falling into like this Blair Waldorf syndrome where like she. Um, schemes every episode and then at the end like feels terrible and falls on her ass you That's know such a good comparison and it's like every episode you think she's learned but then she wakes up in the manor and it's a new day and she has a new scheme yeah but I like the schemes I don't mind the schemes but I want you to feel good about them right I, I only like the schemes like if they pan out like scheme for Liam and, and win him back yeah yeah, yeah. but then it, yeah no I'm with you and like I'm not really liking this season either and I it it genuinely pains me to say it, but it's like, I'd like to see the Fallon that's like out there and killing it. Not like literally everyone basically dancing on her grave. Like even Kirby is like right. winning and Fallon's not like that. That doesn't fly with me. And it's just like, we've gone through so many like Liam and Fallon trials and tribulations and we were finally there. And it's like, he doesn't even fucking remember her now. I know. Oh, and then, oh, maybe now he actually does at the end of this episode. And right. it's like, but she's with Trixie's brother, and it's like, of course. What, he's going to show up at her door now in the next episode? Not in the next episode, but, like, in the next few episodes, obviously. Like, his memory's going to come back to him, and I just can't wait till he realizes that Adam's the one who hit him over the head. And I think oh, I forgot. that might be the end of Adam, once Liam finally remembers Well, that. I'm praying that Adam is blind. Except that Adam he's is, a regular. like, a, a regular. He's in the... He's in the Whatever it's called. And that's theme. just not going to work for me unless, like, he, they just, like, if I can go from, like, hating Kelly Dodd to, like, her being my favorite housewife, like, Adam can turn it around, too. Especially when it's, like, writers writing him. Right. So, if you want to keep him on the show, that's fine. But, like, he needs to come around. And he needs to stop, like, t- trying to take down the family. And it, the whole thing really makes no sense. Like, why is he so out to get Fallon? Like, even so much so as to send her to jail. Because he's obsessed with Blake and just wants to be Blake's number one. It's just... Also, and, like, Blake should have sent him packing when he sent the divers into the lake. Oh. All right. Big time. Big time. Big time. Also, something that's ruining also, the season Blake for me. Also, Blake is being stupid. Blake's being stupid. Something that's ruining the season for me is Crystal 3.0. Oh, my God. She's Not that terrible. there was anything wrong with her. And maybe if she had been the original Crystal, like, I wouldn't think anything. But I was loving Crystal 2.0. I was loving Crystal 2.0. And, and that meant even so much because I loved Crystal 1.0. So, like, for me to come around to Crystal 2.0, like, uh, I just loved Anna Brendan and, like, 
And she was a, like, Crystal 2.0 is a badass. And like, she just had that energy. And Crystal 3.0 is just. Just doesn't have it. She's not giving me badass energy. No. And it's making it really She's hard. not giving me bae. It's making it. Re- badass bae. energy. But this is what I don't understand. We know for a fact that the writers of this show have absolutely no problem writing people out of shows. Like literally left, right, and center. People are just gone. Steven, who? Gone. He's a brother. Gone. And I think every. Everyone under the sun hates Adam, right? But like, no, they're, they decide to, no, fuck you not liking Adam. We're going to make him a regular? Yeah. Not chill. Well, there always needs to be a villain, but we also have Dominique. And now we found out her grand plan, which was just to get her daughter to be famous. Oh, my God, that whole thing. Like, ugh, this, I need them to turn it around. I need them to turn it around. This isn't like, like what the I... The hotel and the soccer player. There's just, like, so many different stories. Oh, my God, the soccer player. I... And obviously his leg is, like, ruined now. Yeah, because and uh, he can't play soccer. Like, I just, I don't care about the Atlantics. I know. Like, the Atlantics is still last season. And now we have a wine company. Caroline Calloway got a shout out. That was just, that I was texted crazy. Jackie. I was like. That was crazy. I was just like. Yeah, and it was crazy. obviously, like, that was Crystal 3.0. Like, she's not in tune. No, clearly. Like, imagine like they said, like, Jackie O problems. Oh my God, there's a million influencers. Just like look at the Olivia nominees Culpo. for the Revolve Awards. Yeah. Lauren Elizabeth. No, literally, like, it's like that PA didn't do their research that day. No, not at freaking they all. They probably just like came across the article and they were like, oh, let's just put her in there. Yeah, like search famous influencer. Yeah. Um, I'm just really hoping they turn it around. Riverdale, I know you're not caught up. I'm just confused. Like, is Cole Sprouse leaving the show? I actually don't know. I saw that you posted that and it's like, are you just trying to ruin it for everyone? No, because nobody knows. Okay, so obviously and also, to him. Thanks. And no, we don't, not yet. Also, at the end of season two, they make it seem as the, at the end of season, the most recent season three, is that what it was? They made it seem like something happened to him. So I'm sorry, if, you, if you're not caught up on the, uh, on the last season, I can't help you. That's not a spoiler. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. no, don't come for me saying it's a spoiler because it's fully not. Oh Everyone God. knew that something happened to Cole. At the end of season three. Three, whatever. What happened? Remember it ends with like, Flash to spring break and everyone's looking for... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that anyway. Right. Okay, cool. I need to catch up on Riverdale, but like we have a lot of time. Com- well, not in the next two weeks, but where you're taking a family vacation, I'm going to catch up on everything. It's going to be great. You're going to catch up on family vacation? I don't know. Like we, we have a long flight. I'm going to LA. Like, oh, I just like have on the flights, flights, but you're not going to like go into your room and like watch. No, no, not without counselor. Right. Anyways. Snitch, it's been a true joy. This is crazy. You'll be back for a snitch on the toes eventually, but like, like when? I don't know, but sometime you'll be back. When? I if don't you know. do like a show on a Saturday, maybe, I mean, if, or if we did like a podcast only episode, right? But in these chairs, in these chairs, it's I gonna be a while, say. or never. That's crazy. We'll see. We'll miss you so much. We'll see you tomorrow, though. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll see you, like, every day, like, because you're my sister and my counselor. Right. And thank you guys for tuning in. We are the Millennial Morning Show. We go live Monday through Friday, 1030 a.m. Eastern Time. Claudia will be back tomorrow. In the meantime, subscribe. Like this video. Subscribe to us on podcast. Check out The Snatchler. New, New episode, episode comes out tomorrow. More life updates from you. Just, like, telling us about where you're at. I can't wait to listen to it. Um, it's going to be incredible. A new episode of Date Night with Raven and Adam comes out today. So make sure you're subscribed to all of our TNN shows. And make sure to follow me. Um, I'm at 98K. Oh my God. We got to get, get this me, that get is her. That's her goodbye gift. That's my parting gift. Um, 100K. But yeah, I love you guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being it's just the best in the biz. Been a consummate it's professional. It's been a true pleasure. And now my watch has ended. I'm just like so fucking depressed. I can't. And I shan't. And I went. Anyways, make sure to follow me at Jackie O Problems so you can see this jacket in question. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a great Monday, everyone. Good luck. You'll get through it. It's almost over. It's halfway over. No, it's not. Halfway in 30 minutes.